Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast, that's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am a little bit cold this morning, Brian, and I know it's been pretty cold down in Kentucky also, but what's better than warming up the fans on Horse Center? Yeah, e either that or a little bit of maybe a shot of bourbon, but Horse Center will do, Matt. We're uh, we're going to get a little warmer in Kentucky finally, I think, today. We'll see. I, I told you be off the show that it was six degrees driving my daughter to school, so that's uh, a little unkentucky like But here we go, Matt. We're going to go down to a warmer climate for this weekend uh, week show. The, the uh, Saturday card at Fairgrounds in New Orleans has six stakes races, Matt. Uh, there's Kentucky Oaks points available in the Silver Bullet Day. There's turf stakes there. There's sprint stakes. We're going to focus, though, on the two graded stakes from Fairgrounds, and we're going to start with the Kentucky Derby points race, the LeCompte. Are you ready to roll, sir? I am ready. Let's do it. I'm going to bring up that field, Matt. It is a mile and a 16th on Saturday. Uh, this is a $200,000 grade three, Matt. How many points to the winner for the Kentucky Derby uh, qualifiers? I, I think we're, we're, we have stepped up to the 20 point to the winner, the 2010 642. Six, four, two range. Easy for you to say. Yeah, 20 points to the winner, Matt. And that starts uh, that starts meaning something when you can add 20 points in one race this time of year. So the winner of the LeCompte probably has a good shot to eventually make that field of 20 on the first Saturday at May at Churchill Downs. Let's look at the field. We have eight three-year-olds running, uh, perhaps a little bit dominated by Brad Cox in that he has three. But none of those three, surprisingly, will be the favorite in here, Matt. We're going to start from the rail out, though, and we can start talking about one of two from trainer Keith DeSormo. Next level, you see him as a long shot, Matt. He was a long shot last time in the gun runner, and he really didn't do anything. No, he finished seventh in that gun runner. Uh, uh, Keith DeSormo's got two in this field. He actually won the LeCompte a couple years ago with uh call me midnight if you remember uh you re if you remember that horse and it took uh, uh next level five tries to break uh his maiden special weight but he did it at fairgrounds yeah he did it pretty nicely at fairgrounds two starts back did the son of vino rosso and i do remember call me midnight matt and i remember pretty nice odds on call me midnight for DeSormo winning the LeCompte a few years ago. So maybe you can't throw out DeSormo in this LeCompte again, but uh, both of them will be long shots. The number two, we can't say the same about Nash, Matt. Nash was a heavy favorite. I believe he was one to two last time in the gun runner. Maybe he got out of the gate just a little bit slow. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, you could probably, at those odds at least, you could call it a little bit disappointing was his third place finish. Yeah, I think so. Uh, this is what this is the first of the three Brad Coxes in the field, and and it it's hard to ignore any Brad Cox in these Derby prep races. Cox has already won three of them on the Derby Trail to uh, this year's Kentucky Derby. Uh, uh, Nash was third in the gun runner, uh, picked, so has picked up a few uh, derby points in there. Had a really big uh, maiden special weight win at Churchill Downs in his second try by over 10 lengths, and I think that's what made him the big favorite uh, in that gun runner. Yeah, it sure did, that impressive maiden win in his second start. He was second in his debut at Keeneland, was the son of Medagliadoro. Uh, this is a Goldolphin homebred. They're always uh, wonderfully bred. And uh, this horse has been hyped, obviously, one to two last time in the gun runner. But with a record of one to three, you got to start wondering, is it more hype than uh, uh, than reality, how good Nash is? But uh, like I said, he did break just a step slow in that gun runner. And he had to do the chasing of the winner, Track Phantom, last time. Certainly eligible to prove here second time fairgrounds. He'll need a better start, probably. Uh, fourth career start only here, so there is room for improvement for the highly regarded Nash. Once again, Matt, with Florent Giroux in the saddle, though, I think he will get that. Uh, maybe not the favorite this time. The number three is Tizzy Indy, and we'll talk about Keith DeSormo again here, Matt. Call me midnight a few years ago as a long shot one at Tizzy Indy will be a long shot on Saturday. 
Yeah, oh yeah. I think both his horses will be nice prices, but Tizzy Lizzy is going to be uh, a bigger price, I would assume. Uh, Tizzy Lizzy uh, broke his maiden for a $20,000 tag, and that might be enough to stop right there and say I'm not not particularly interested in this horse. Uh, uh, yeah, a, yeah. Yeah, a, a runner for Calumet Farms. Uh, uh, since that maiden win, second in the starter allowance, third most recently on the turf in an allowance. Yeah, Tesormo, I don't mind that. Tesormo is a trainer who will go back and forth a little between turf and dirt. Uh, it won nicely. Yeah, it was made in 20,000 at Churchill a, a few starts back. But uh, this just doesn't look like a horse with the class we'd expect to run a big LeCompte for sure. Number four, Matt, I think is a real wild card. His name is Can Group. Can Group is the son of Good Samaritan, trained by Mark Cassie. Can Group is a graded stakes winner. There's not a lot of graded stakes winners in the field. Can Group is. Uh, lately, though, the son of Good Samaritan has been running on the turf. Yeah, that's true. And and you mentioned DeSormo as a trainer. That's good going between turf and dirt changing surfaces. I think we can say the same thing uh, about Mark Cassie. Uh, Cassie has won the LeCompte a couple times uh, in the last few years, remembering, of course, War of Will and Enforceable as those two winners. Uh, uh, last three have been on the turf, uh, and uh, uh, most recently was a fourth in the Breeders' Cup turf, where uh, he came from way behind to finish a close, a relatively close fourth, considering where he was in the race. And you mentioned that he won that grade two bourbon. Yeah, the grade two bourbon win, of course, came at Keeneland. And uh, he just got up that day. He He's a horse without much early speed. And, and, so, and sometimes that can work. As we look at the pace projector here, we see the likely favorites, uh, the number seven track phantom. And inside him, the number two Nash uh, are projected as uh, the most speed in the field. Um, um, a moderate pace, not a not a super strong pace, not a super slow pace is expected from Time Form US here, Matt. But you see, uh, the four can group way back, and he was way back in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf in his last start, a little over two months ago. But he came flying wide, and he was beaten only two lengths. He's got some class. He ran on dirt in his first two starts. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, third in both, well beaten third in, in the more recent one, of course. I see dirt breeding, though, here, Matt. Good Samaritan is a horse who could probably run on both, probably better known for turf, but uh, he's got some dirt pedigree in his breeding for sure. And then on the other side, he's out of a street sense mare. So can group a horse with some class coming back to dirt. Not a lot of speed, but an interesting uh, possibility here. Another interesting possibility is another horse you see near the back of the pack on this time form U.S. base projector. His name is Ethan Energy, Matt. And I think Ethan Energy, uh, you know, I, I guess I'm not uh, blowing the lid off anything here, but the son of Uncle Mo seems to have a lot of potential. Uh, di didn't really get going in a sprint at Keeneland until, until the stretch made up some ground there. Uh, but his uh, second race, which was his most recent race, was very impressive. It was very impressive, Brian. A nice maiden special weight victory uh, at fairgrounds, stretching out to today's distance, won that race by more than five lengths. And this is, of course, the second of the three Brad Cox horses in, the, in this race. And we remember that Brad Cox won this race last year with instant coffee. Instant coffee. Where's instant coffee been lately, man? Uh, Ethan Energy, yeah. Ethan Energy, it, it's very much worth noting that in that easy maiden win, uh, which came uh, just about four weeks ago, that was the same day as the gun runner, the same distance, the same day. And the time is comparable, just slightly slower. And, uh, you know, while Track Phantom still had to work to win that gun runner, Ethan Energy was winning that maiden race very easily. You know, sometimes it's harder when you go up against better horses to uh, run as well. But uh, he won easy, and he did it in a time very comparable uh, on the same track the same day as the gun runner. So Ethan Energy, third-time starter for Brad Cox. He's, a, he's also a Stone Street uh, homebred, Matt. So, you know, there's some also, just like Godolphin, there's some good blood there. Good bloodlines on Ethan Energy to be ridden by Louis Saez on Saturday. 
as you said, the second from Brad Cox's string. Number six is Lat Long. Uh, Lat Long will be ridden by B.J. Hernandez Jr. Lat Long is a son of Liam Smout for Kenny McPeak. Uh, it, it took a while for him to break his maiden, but on the other hand, he's been pretty consistent still. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. It took a while. Actually took five tries for Lat Long to break his maiden. And in one of those maiden, ra uh, maiden races, he was second behind Track Phantom that we have been talking about, the probable favorite uh, in this race. Yeah, Track Phantom was an impressive maiden uh, winner uh, a few starts back. And uh, Lat Long was the horse that was second behind him. I guess it was four or five lengths second, but Lat Long is a horse who can who can rally a little bit for McPeak. He seems, like I said, I already said he's consistent, but he seems to be getting a little bit better and better coming off a nice win uh, last time finally. It was at Oaklawn Park last month where he won at a mile and a 16th. So another horse who could make up some ground in the stretch and another horse who could be on the improve for trainer Kenny McPeak. The seven, I, I think, will be favored this time over Nash. That's because he was a nice winner of the gun runner. Of course, we're talking about Track Phantom, Matt. Track Phantom is a son of quality road for Steve Asmussen out of an AP Indy mare, a half a million dollar yearling purchase. Uh, he's uh, I, he, he's run uh, a, a few races now where he just is getting better with every start. And uh, the maiden win at uh, uh, Churchill Downs was a tip off that he was getting better. And then he showed it in the gun runner. Yeah, getting better. He was, Brian, for sure. He took him three tries to break his maiden, but he went right from that to the gun runner and, and won that derby prep race. He's got 10 derby qualifying points now. And of course, Hall of Fame trainer Steve Asmussen has won this LeCant three times in the past. Yeah, yeah, Asmussen, he's in the right barn. He's got a nice win over the track. I think he draws a nice post there in the number seven post with Joel Rosario in the irons mat. Um, even, even though it did take him three races to break his maiden, if you look at those first two races, I think they were good performances, but he is getting better with every start. I, I, for me, there's a lot to like here with track phantom who probably will be the favorite this time over Nash. Uh, the other horse is a bit of enigma. Number eight, awesome road. Uh, there's some nice breeding there. This is Brad Cox's third entrant in the LeCompte and, uh, looked like a good one. A son of quality road when he was winning his debut at Ellis Park, but uh, great at stake since then, the last two, and he really hasn't shown a lot. Yeah, Brian, that's for sure. He had two starts after that maiden breaker on the Derby Trail. He was fifth in the Kentucky Jockey Club, which got him one Derby, Derby point, and he was seventh in the Breeders' Futurity. Uh, this is the third Brad Cox in the field it is i think important to note that he is also cross entered in a stakes race on on saturday also but cross entered at turfway park so i don't know i guess i wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, awesome road end up there yeah after two tough races where again he didn't do all that much it might be uh uh, uh make a lot of sense if he ends up in a little bit easier spot a horse with potential he could turn it around but uh, it's hard to pick awesome road off those two graded stakes races here in a pretty good edition of the LeCompte all right Matt we're going to uh, change gears because we're going to go from the three-year-olds to older horses in some cases much older horses here and I think we have another nice uh, field not a big field but I think we have another nice field to talk about. It's the Louisiana Stakes. This is also a grade three, also a mile and 16th on Saturday. It's actually the race directly before the LeCompte. Uh, they end the uh, nice card at Fairgrounds on Saturday with the Louisiana as the 12th race and then the LeCompte as the 13th race. A lot of interesting horses. Uh, these odds, by the way, were uh, uh, done by Horse Center. So we did not use the morning line odds, which I think are now out, Matt, but uh, we went with my odds, and Red Route 1 uh, could be a horse who has bet a little bit more than I have there. But uh, on the other hand, he's only won three out of 15 starts. Still, I find him interesting here in this Louisiana. Yeah, I'm going to agree with that, Brian. Uh, this uh, field in the Louisiana is interesting. There are, you know, uh, uh, several of the horses in the field have 
had a had a nice victory, graded stakes victory in in the past, and and uh, it's a race where you know uh, which one of these horses is going to come up with one of those big performances again. Uh, Red Root Red Root One um, is is a horse who has had a uh, a relatively big win, and that came last year as a three year old. Uh, he ran. His last four races have been in those mid-major derbies where he's run well in all of them, but he got a win in the West Virginia Derby. This will be his first start uh, as an older horse against older horses uh, since he raced only against uh, three-year-olds last year. He's a horse that likes to come off the pace, and uh, he might get a good setup in the Louisiana. Yeah, Matt, uh, for sure. I, I think there is some speed in here. We're going to look at the time form U.S. pace projector in a second. But Red Route 1, you say Red Route 1, I say Red Route 1. Either way, the Sonic Gun Runner is a two-time stakes winner. You mentioned his nice uh, graded stakes victory at Mountaineer Park in the uh, West Virginia Derby late last summer. Uh, this is a horse who truly danced every dance. I mean, he was in a ton of stakes races uh, going back more than a year he doesn't win often, but he usually comes running, especially on dirt. I guess they had a failed turf uh, try in there. But Red Route 1, a very interesting horse, making his first start as a four-year-old. Matt, I'll add to that. This is his first start, surprisingly, as much as he's run in so many uh, stakes races and graded stakes races. This is his first start at, uh, at the fairgrounds. And uh, this is a, a track where you can rally uh, with that long stretch. Red Route 1 might be a horse who likes that long stretch at the fairgrounds. He's certainly a horse who likes to come from off the pace. And there is the time form U.S. pace projector. You see a fast pace red button there, Matt. Uh, and you see some of the uh, top principles in the race are, are, are on the lead in uh, Saudi Crown and Five Star General. We'll talk more about them there, but uh, you see some of the others are farther back, including, of course, Red Route One and Happy American. Getting back to the field, let's go to number two, Matt. Uh, Certainly a horse that we need to talk about a little bit is Smile Happy. Smile Happy is a Kenny McPeak runner and Smile Happy has been a real graded stakes performer ever since he was a two-year-old. In fact, one of his two graded, great two wins came back as a two-year-old. He's five now, so he's been kind of sporadic with his racing, but a a very nice record as far as uh, uh, either winning or running good races. He's got several good wins. He's got several good in-the-money finishes. We haven't seen him, though, for... Oh, it's uh, going on about half a year now. Yeah, Brian, he's been off. Uh, he's been off since July, and and you mentioned a lot of great good racing in the past. He he qualified for the Kentucky Derby in 2022, where uh, he finished eighth. Um, last, as you mentioned, last seen in July, that was running in the Stephen Foster at Churchill Downs, where he uh, uh, finished fifth. Uh, uh, I guess looking like a horse that maybe needed some time off, which uh, which he got uh, um, before that. He ran a huge, huge race, Brian, in the Ali Sheba, uh, the grade two at Churchill Downs that got a really, really big speed figure. Yeah, that was my uh, that was my nice win on Kentucky Oak Stake. Because Smile Happy had some reasonably good odds for such a classy horse. That Alex Sheba was a very big performance. Stuck down on the rail at Ellis Park a little bit. He didn't run terribly in, in the Grade One Foster. He was fifth feet in less than five lengths, but he just never fired off that rail on a sweltering hot day at Ellis Park. Uh, freshening since then from McPeak, Smile Happy is a talented son of Run Happy. Uh, if he runs back a, a similar race to uh, what we saw in that Ali Sheba, just two starts back, uh, I, I think he's a horse who probably wins this race, and he's not likely to be the favorite. I'll also mention that B.J. Hernandez Jr. is on Smile Happy. They're two for two together, and Hernandez last rode him in that nice Ali Sheba win at Churchill Downs. Number three is the horse that I think we expect to be favorite, Matt. Cox, Giroux. Saudi Crown. Saudi Crown is coming off maybe a poor, poor performance, but certainly uh, 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 one that you can excuse. He was a lightly raced three-year-old going into the Breeders' Cup Classic, uh, trying to 
prompt the pace at that mile and a quarter distance in the Breeders' Cup Classic. And not shocking, not surprising that he faded out in the stretch. He finished 10th that day in the Breeders' Cup Classic. But before that, you see nothing but good races from the son of Always Dreaming. Yeah, nothing but good races. Brian, firsts and seconds, uh, as you mentioned, uh, started his career as a three-year-old later on, passed the uh, uh, the past the uh, the triple crown races but yeah a lot of a uh, lot of good victories um, most notably in the Pennsylvania Derby which was his race uh, before the Breeders Cup Classic he just he just skipped along Brian in the Pennsylvania Derby on a super super sloppy track and won that race uh, clearly on the front end but before that he had a ni- couple of really nice second place finishes second in the Jim Dandy second in the Dwyer uh, uh, and like you said the Breeders Cup Classic his first try uh, against older and now he's coming back uh, a fresh horse a fresh horse a speedy horse uh, a talented horse a horse who's proven some class those races uh, his best two career races both came on sloppy tracks but on the other hand I think he's shown enough on fast tracks where you think he can handle anything on dirt, uh, does Savvy Crown. He was second by a nose, literally, in his stakes debut when he uh, just was beaten uh, in the uh, grade three Dwyer. And then, of course, the Jim Dandy was a big performance where maybe he was a little unlucky to lose by, again, a nose to Forte in the Jim Dandy at Saratoga. Penn Derby, uh, there was a Pletcher horse who came running at him, but he had enough in the stretch to win that grade one race two starts back and that's why he's going to be the favorite i think here coming off a grade one race two starts back uh like i said the classic excusable people love to bet uh, brad cox for good reason and saudi crown uh would be one of those horses who you could easily say hey he's one of the horses to watch out for in in the handicap division and maybe he'll take a much better shot at the breeders cup classic later this year much later this year uh, when we uh, when we see him get another shot down the road, but Saudi Crown, uh, the likely favorite in here. There is other speed, as we saw in the time form U.S. pace projector, uh, but Saudi Crown is a consistently good speed horse. Number four has no speed. Number four is Happy American. That Happy American is a horse who, on occasion, can run a big race. Happy American won this race last year, as a matter of fact. I I don't think it was quite as tough as this little seven horse field that he'll see on Saturday, but he did win this race. He's won stakes races at fairgrounds before. He loves to come from out of it like Red Route 1. Son of Run Happy was last seen when rallying for third in the Tenacious. Yeah, Brian, and we've got three horses in this field that ran in the Tenacious, which was the the prep race for this big day of racing at uh, at the fairgrounds. Uh, uh, Happy American is six years old now, so we'll see how things go as he uh, as he ages. And yet, as you mentioned, uh, that win in the Tenacious was his most recent victory. Uh, yeah, actually, he won the Tenacious uh, a year ago or a little over a year ago, and the Louisiana uh, this race last year was his last win so he's he's gone 0 for 8 since but there are several good performances where he's rallying often for third in those eight races and uh, if it's a strong pace over a track he likes and the tenacious so he's starting to round into form i could see happy american certainly being a horse that you might want to include maybe lower down in your exotics to pick up a piece the winner of the tenacious though matt is five star general and and this is the the horse that i think most likely uh, to uh, make life a little bit more difficult for Saudi Crown. This is, this is a horse who, by the way, is kind of off the radar, but a really nice horse, Matt. He's won 11 of 33 starts. He's eight years old now, uh, a winner of a race near and dear to my heart, the Long Acres Mile, uh, last, uh, last summer out uh, at Emerald Downs, uh, uh, just outside of Seattle. A, a nice horse, a speed horse, but he showed us something last time in the Tenacious. Yeah, I agree. Uh, a, a terrific horse uh, with uh, with all those victories. A little bit of a globe trotter, as you mentioned, going all the way out to the West Coast to win that Long Acres Mile, uh, um, and and uh, um, winning the Tenacious most recently was third in the Delta Mile, uh, and uh, 
was eighth in the Lucas Classic, stepping up into a uh, uh, what is probably a tougher field than this one. Yeah, and, and two starts back, Matt, he ran a very good race at Delta Downs, and that's become a key race where the horses that finished in the top three have come back well, and that Tenacious was a big performance, winning by three lengths. Yeah, he, he actually was stabled out at Emerald Downs for a while in his career, and uh, Grant Forster now has had him for a while, and he's been bouncing around and, and finding these stakes races. And, yeah, eight, eight, it, I guess he was seven at the time, now eight. Uh, but uh, it would be easy to call that last performance, again, an easy three-length win over a decent field in the Tenacious as his best race yet. Again, he's the horse most likely to uh, be out there with Saudi Crown. It'll be interesting to see who's actually on the lead and who's stalking is in this one. Another horse who could be out there, but you just never know, is Confidence Game. Confidence Game, another one of those DeSormo runners, Matt. I saw him win the Rebel uh, uh, a while back. It's, it seems like, uh, I guess it was about 11 months ago at Oakland Park. He's only had four starts since the Rebel, but certainly he's been a disappointment ever since he won that pretty big race at Oakland Park. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. And I guess that has continued along. Uh, he was in that uh, tenacious uh, with uh, five-star general and happy American, and he finished a uh, uh, non-threatening fifth. Yeah, yeah, a, a bit of an enigma, and and it, it, I was really surprised when I saw the betting. I don't know about you, Matt, for the Tenacious. Uh, Five-star general was ignored. Confidence Game was the favorite in that race. I guess they thought he would bounce back, and he never really did it that day. Maybe he bounces back in his second start at the fairgrounds here, but uh, there there is some... There is some talent there. There also is some speed, and I, I would expect him to show a little bit more speed this time. But with five-star general and Saudi crown, I don't necessarily know if that's a good thing. You see the time form U.S. pace projector has, again, those top two, Saudi crown and five-star general right there, and confidence game, and the seven, Kapuna, uh, not far back. And Kapuna is another horse I don't think you can completely throw out. Looks to me, Matt, like the longest shot on the field. But I went back to look at his fairground races, and his last time he ran at fairgrounds, he won an allowance race by six lengths. Yeah, I, I think so, Brian. He feels like a, a little bit more like an allowance type uh, a type horse. Uh, he set the pace uh, last time uh, in an allowance race where he finished third. Uh, so he's running okay right now, and I think most significantly. Uh, he could be uh, a part of the pace. Yeah, yeah, probably you're right. And, and and as we're talking about now, the six and the seven, after Saudi Crown and Five Star General, we see why this could be a, a pretty hot pace in this mile 16th race. And maybe the uh, favorite, uh, Saudi Crown, is a little bit vulnerable because of that pace, Matt. And that'll be a segue to uh, us talking about our top picks here. Finally, for the LeCompte in Louisiana. I'm going to let you go first. We'll start where we started, Matt. That's the LeCompte. Uh, 20 Derby points on the line. Who's going to get those 20 Kentucky Derby qualifying points in your estimation? Well, Brian, as I mentioned a little bit when we were doing the rundown uh, of the field, uh, uh, it's hard to ignore Brad Cox in these Derby preps. So I'm going to I'm gonna make Nash my, my top pick. Uh, I am hoping that the he will uh, take a step forward, as he certainly he certainly could uh, after that third place finish in the Gun Runner and turn the tables on Track Phantom. Yeah, and, and and I think that people will be thinking what you're thinking a little bit, and and I don't think it'll be a clear favorite Track Phantom. I think they'll be relatively close in how they're bet. I do think Track Phantom will be the favorite. But uh, I don't think he'll be bet as low as I think he deserves to be off, especially his last two races. Nash, yeah, I'm scared of him. But uh, again, one of three, I think there might be a little bit more hype than, than reality for Nash. Track Phantom just looks like a horse who's on the track to the Kentucky Derby to me. Asmussen has him going in the right direction. I've liked all of his races. Uh, uh, the first three at Churchill where he only won one, but he beat a decent horse. He ran against decent horses there uh, nicely. He beat, uh, 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 what's his name, Lat Long. 
Uh, two starts back at Churchill Downs looked like a good thing, proved it in the gun runner. I prefer the post position of Track Phantom. To tell you the truth, I might be worried about Cox's other horse more. Ethan Energy looks like a potentially very good horse in here, but I'm I'm all about Track Phantom in the LeCompte. Matt, how about the Louisiana? Louisiana, Brian, I am going to uh, uh, take a shot against uh, Saudi Crown, who I think is going to be a pretty heavy favorite. You mentioned uh, uh, his past performances uh, prior to the the Breeders' Cup Classic, very impressive. Brad Cox, he's going to get bet heavily. Uh, um, you know, certainly, uh, uh, probably deserves to be the the favorite. I'm going to take a shot with uh, Smile Happy. I'm going to hope that uh, Kenny McPeak is going to have him ready to fire because if he fires his best race, he's going to be tough. Yeah, I think he wins if he fires his best race. Uh, BJ Hernandez up for the third time. Uh, two nice wins under BJ Hernandez before he sits a nice trip behind the speed. Uh, hopefully he'll work out a good trip from the two hole. He should with the speed going out in front of him. I like Smile Happy. I think a mile 16th is a really nice distance for Smile Happy. I too think Sa Saudi Crown is a little bit over bet here and Smile Happy will have some reasonable odds as the second choice on Saturday in Louisiana. So I'm with you there. Matt, you're on two second choices. I could only muster a favorite in the second choice, but I feel pretty good about my two picks on Saturday. All right, folks, that's it. Uh, don't forget about the Silver Bullet Day and, and three other stakes races at Fairgrounds, uh, but uh, I hope you enjoyed our talk about the LeCompte and the Louisiana here. Matt, let me get a parting shot from you, my friend. I'm all warmed up now for a little racing action after doing the show, but I think a lot of tracks are canceled around the country. But anyway, I'm looking forward to the Saturday Fairgrounds card. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the show. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for watching the show every week. If you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel at Horse Racing Nation, it helps Matt and I out. So we appreciate you doing that. Turn on your notifications. Leave us a comment. I love the comments that really uh, grind us down to dirt, Matt. And, and I like the comments that say, hey, we're, we're, we're all right, too. Either, either way, we appreciate you uh, reading them. Thanks to Candace Curtis, of course, our friend in the home office for the race graphics and Timeform US for the great pace projections that they do for all these races around the country. Also, our sponsor, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. Thanks to them. Most of all, thanks to you folks. We'll be back next week. And of course, we will be talking about a rich, rich day from South Florida with the Pegasus World Cup. A little over a week out, Matt, and, and big races on the dirt and turf there. So a lot to look forward to. I Look forward to being with you again in a week. Until then, everyone, good luck. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week right here on Horse Center.